Now on Fios 1, a Long Island tragedy is remembered, the 20th anniversary of the LIRR massacre. Yesterday, December 7th, 1941, a date which will live in infamy. Plus, it was the day the Japanese awoke a sleeping giant that brought America into World War II, the attack on Pearl Harbor 72 years later. And flooding concerns for people living in our area, what new research is saying about coastal areas. The news starts right now. Hello, I'm Nancy Ward. Thank you for watching. We'll get to our top stories in just a few moments, but first, let's check that forecast. Sharon Song joins me now with more on this. And Sharon, it was a pretty nice week. I mean, mild mm -hmm. temperatures. Yes, and then we saw those rain showers yesterday. We'll take a break for today, but then snow showers are actually in the forecast for Sunday. Our top story, a Long Island tragedy remembered. It was 20 years ago today that an ordinary train ride turned into chaos. Colin Ferguson opened fire at a train station on Long Island, killing six people and injuring 19. Files 1's Hanan Kamal joins us live from the Merlon Avenue station in Garden City where that fateful scene unfolded. Good morning, Hanan. A dozen people are recovering today after being hospitalized. It came after an elderly woman crashed her car into a Trader Joe's on Long Island. Nassau County police say it happened around 1 p.m. Friday at the Trader Joe's on Long Beach Road in Oceanside. A customer inside the store was pinned by the car against a wall and suffered the most serious injuries. Authorities say most of the others who were treated had cuts from flying glass. A 78-year-old woman who was driving the car told authorities she did not know what happened. Six hometown heroes have received one of the military's highest honors. It's for a heroic act that took place last December in Afghanistan's Kandahar province. Six members of the 106th Rescue Wing, a specially trained group from West Hampton Beach, rescued three Americans and an Afghan soldier under heavy enemy fire. For their selflessness, they were awarded the Bronze Star, the fourth highest medal the military can bestow. We're willing to do a lot of things in order to bring our brothers home. Regardless of service and regardless of their nationality, we bring them all home. Fantastic. At the end of the ceremony, a special flag that flew over the U.S. Capitol building in honor of the men was presented to them by Congressman Tim Bishop. Making headlines in New Jersey at this hour, gravely ill. A potentially deadly infection has spread beyond Princeton University to another university. But are they related? And neighbors distraught after a one-year-old child falls out of a third-story window. So how did it happen? Plus, human trafficking happening right here in our backyard. Details on these stories and more right now on Fios One's Morning Edition. Bios One News, Morning Edition. Good morning, New Jersey. It's Friday, November 22nd. You're watching the Fios News Morning Edition. I'm Nancy Ward filling in for CJ Papa. I'm joined with meteorologist Brian Fitzgerald, who's going to have our weather. Yeah, and things uh, shape it up a little better this morning. It's yes. mild. Uh, there is a little rain around, so we have to be aware of that, okay. but it's not quite as chilly. That's not quite good. as chilly. Yeah. It's nice on this Friday. And Gloria Chop is going to have our traffic. Hopefully not too bad today. Well, you know, the weather might be nice, but it's the season for... Good luck alert. Good luck alert. Uh, yes. You don't want to hear that. Well, <laughs> we'll try to get it's the weekend, so that's the good news. That's good news. We'll get to today's top stories in just a minute, but first Brian is heading over to the weather center for your weather on the one. A new case of meningitis has been reported at a New Jersey college, raising concerns across the state. The president of Monmouth University has confirmed an employee has been hospitalized after being diagnosed with a potentially deadly infection. Files 1's Natalie Patterson is in West Long Branch this morning. And Natalie, is this the only case there right now? A child is in critical but stable condition this morning after falling out of a third floor window in his Jersey City home last night. His father told police he was cooking in the kitchen when his one-year-old son fell out of their bedroom window. The father found his son laying on the pavement, brought him back upstairs, and then called 911. The accident has some neighbors distraught over how this could have happened. How could a child fall out of a three-story floor window and where's the parents? What happens? How is the window open? How? I just don't understand. I just don't understand how could that could happen to him. I really don't. Investigators say the little boy sustained injuries to his head, spleen, and lungs. He was rushed to Jersey City Medical Center and then transferred to University Hospital in Newark. 
The woman who was hit by a car at the Trader Joe's in Westwood last week has lost her leg. 49-year-old Ruta Fiorino had just finished her shift when she was struck by a 75-year-old New Milford woman, sending her through a store window. After being airlifted to the hospital, doctors amputated her right leg. Friends have come together to support the victim, creating a Facebook page that has already gained over 1,500 likes called Rooting for Ruta. The driver was issued a summons for careless driving. A follow-up to a story the Morning Edition first brought to you yesterday. The alleged slashing incident reported by a Ridgewood High School student never happened. That's according to Ridgewood Mayor Paul Arosan. The mayor says police investigated the student's story, finding that no attack happened. The student first reported that a man followed him, trying to take his book bag, and then slashed him. No word yet if the student will face charges in the case. Federal authorities in New Jersey say two men have pleaded guilty in one of the nation's largest and longest running stolen identity refund fraud schemes. Prosecutors say a multi-agency task force uncovered the scheme where more than 8,000 fraudulent income tax returns were filed. Michael Senator of Pennsylvania and David Pinsky of Fort Lee have both pleaded guilty to counts of conspiracy and theft of government property. Prosecutors say the men and others obtained personal information belonging to Puerto Rican citizens and used it to create fraudulent returns. Prosecutors say the suspects were seeking more than $65 million in refunds, and the scheme cost Uncle Sam more than $12 million. The annual Great American Smokeout hits New Jersey. Thursday was devoted to drawing attention about the dangers of smoking, especially for young people. According to the Department of Health, 14% of the state's smokers are high schoolers. That number increases to 16% for people 18 to 24 years of age. The rise in smokers comes during an era where teens and young adults are bombarded by more choices in how and what to smoke, including electronic cigarettes. Like New York City, the Garden State may soon consider legislation that would raise the legal age for buying a pack of cigarettes from 18 to 21 years of age. They sell coffee, newspapers, sandwiches, and other goodies. And now you can add to the list lottery tickets. Today, Wawa will announce a statewide partnership with the New Jersey Lottery to offer self-service ticket machines at all of its 210 stores in the state by Memorial Day. Back in October, the convenience store first put in the machines at a new location in Lodi. And as you head out the door this morning, you don't want to forget that cup of joe. It may do more than just wake you up.